Hello everyone. Today is my birthday. I'm 38 years old and um, I have a lot of life ahead of me. I'm soon to be enrolled hopefully in Kaiser University. There's a campus in Tampa Bay or Tampa. I'm going for my uh, associates and uh, law studies and then I'm going to transfer over to psychology for my bachelor's or whatever whatever that all means just so I can have some piece of paper accrediting me with some type of academic training or education which to me that sounds are you coming with us? yeah I know, I'll be ready. Anyways, so I need that to, as just to show, you know, I don't need it. I don't feel I need it, but it wouldn't hurt. And I don't feel I'm too old to start off on my embarking on um, the quest for knowledge. I've been listening to so many lectures from some of the wisest souls on this earth. Ram Dass, Alan Watts, Terence McKenna, um, Carl Jung, uh, Frederick Nietzsche, um, and the um, ancient Romans and the Greeks, Pythagorean, uh, Plato, Aristotle, all these people. And it's some of it's heavy reading, some of it's not. There's books I want to read, The Devil's Pulpit. I really want to read that. Joseph Campbell's A Hero's Journey, I need to read that. So many books I need to read. I spent so much of my life watching movies and entertainment and stuff. And... I mean, there, there's an aspect of truth in all that. There's pre-echoes of real life. And it's amazing. It's almost like society itself is an entity. Um, some of these ideas I pull from this guy, Matt, from Quantum of Conscious, Conscience, Conscience, Quantum of conscience. It's appropriate, con science, because science is a religion. And most of the masses believe, wholeheartedly they believe. Was it Einstein that said, belief, or no, condemnation without investigation is the highest height of ignorance or something to that effect. So, you know, when you bring up these notions of, say, astrology is the most basic and ancient science known to man, and when you study this, there's so much that synchronicities show you it's a fractal universe it's um, Mercury um, the closest planet to the Sun also Mercury the Quicksilver the liquid metal that in one clump you can see a reflection of everything in it and when you drop it and it splatters into a thousand beads, each bead holds the same potentiality of the whole. So if you use that metaphor as, uh, okay, God created us in his, his image, so it's almost like the fractal universe, God being the the full pool of Mercury, per se. Mercury also being 
the god Mercury or Hermes Trismegistus, one of my favorite um, ancient scholars or whatever. Um, it's just amazing and it's beautiful and there's much to be grateful for. Don't forget that. And kindness is, is a very important aspect of this life. Kindness shown to others can have an unimaginable effect. It's... Okay, so today is December 31st, 2020. It's my birthday, I'm 38. Um, I remember a couple Christmases ago, I was, I found myself homeless in the dead of winter. And I had a guitar and I had a backpack with some stuff. Didn't have much to my name. You know, I didn't have any money, penniless. No food stamps, no nothing an expensive drug habit that I tried and tried and tried to, to pull away from, but it was just so consuming. I am still, in a way, grappling with that. I always will, whether I'm in recovery, sobriety, whatever, I'll still have, uh, I will still always have this inclination that I can change my perspective at the drop of a hit of acid or the snort of a line of anything. You know, I was addicted to opiates for many years and benzos as well. And those are some of the roughest years of my life. Um, I was married to a beautiful soul, the most beautiful person I've ever I've ever known in my life. And we we met early <clears throat> in life. We were fifteen and we fell in love, madly in love, madly in lust. You know, that age, you know, nothing could Nothing could, no one could tell me any better, you know. But the harder you fall in love, they call it falling in love for a reason, because you fall, and you fall hard. And it's a double-edged sword, because the harder you fall in love, the harder you fall out of love, not out of love, the harder, you know what I'm trying to get at. Love is a double-edged sword, so after that experience, um, I don't want to get into it, but it was very guilt-ridden and shame and to, for myself, and I, I fell into a deep depression, but not before I met this girl in the summer of... 2006, the year after my divorce, and the year after my discharge from the military. And she was beautiful. She was a beautiful person. Um, very sexual in nature. And she knew this. And she was very manipulative. She could get what she wanted. And I fell madly in love with her. I quit my job. I just did all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, love makes you do crazy stuff. And um, I spent the summer with her because her boyfriend was in jail that summer. So she told me, she told me the stipulation. We could be together for the summer, but when her boyfriend got out of jail, it would be over. And I was okay with that. So I thought. 
until the time came when he got out and she went back to him and I was in love with her by then. But then again, I had also developed an addiction or at least a very serious habit of taking um, about 300 milligrams of tramadol every day, which is a, mm, I'd say synthetic opiate, but not really. It mimics the opiates. Um, so this is what got me started on my addiction to opiates. For about a full year, the tramadol, it was a daily thing, and it was amazing every day. Every day I felt amazing, got rid of all the heartache and all the pain. I could eat again, I could sleep. <laughs> I, uh, I felt like I had a new lease on life. But then one day I was hanging out with a friend from long years past named Tony. Billy Kay's son. Very crazy individual. You know what I mean, if you know him. Um, he, he, he's a very, a very individualistic persona. He's almost an archetype. And we hit it off immediately, and he introduced me to this man who's a religious fanatic and a self-proclaimed healer and also an accused child molester or I don't know it's it's very weird but anyways he had a prescription of uh, hydrocodone 10 milligram pills so I bought a couple of these green beans off him and I swallowed them I proceeded about my day, and about an hour later, I was in the convenience store, and the feeling that come over me was so amazing and so tranquil and so divine and, and so incredible that I immediately drove back to this guy's house and said, how many more do you have and how much do you want for them? Because this is what I want. This is the cat's meow. <laughs> and um, that started me on my path to opiate addiction. Now, not to mention, when I was in middle school, I was introduced to Ritalin and, and amphetamine salts and uh, diam, di, di, diamphetamines or whatever, um, methylphenidate and basically stimulants. And uh, that, that was my first drug love that was my first love with drugs um, then along came marijuana now marijuana was my true love for many years um, as long as I had weed that pocket full of sunshine I was happy but if I didn't have it I, I wasn't content and I had anger and I don't know where I'm going with this, but I do want to tell you that I've been listening to lectures by these people, uh, Terrence McKenna talking about the Gnostic traditions and uh, the Hermetic principles and Hermes Trismegistus and all these figures of antiquity and the wisdom that they bestowed upon us through their writings and luckily these books weren't all burned by the holy christian crusaders during the uh, 1620s i believe or i don't know the exact dates who knows history is a lie agreed upon so <laughs> it could have been 200 years ago who knows you know um belief is the enemy of knowledge Belief is the enemy of knowing. Right now? Hang on, hang on. Okay, I love you all.